Hello, fellow Americans. I am here to help you with your homework on the Declaration of Independence. I know this is a very difficult um, assignment, um, but I think it's a very worthwhile assignment. So I want to go through this. I want to read each excerpt to you and explain what each excerpt means and maybe show you a couple of the pictures that were drawn by some of your classmates. This is going to be a little bit longer of a video, um, but I think it's going to be worthwhile, especially if you need help on your homework. Um, our assignment is to um, rephrase the excerpts out of the Declaration of Independence and write them in language that a third grader could understand. Um, I think it's pretty difficult to um, get a third grader to understand things like tyranny and despotism and things of that nature, but we're going to give it a shot here. Um, it starts out, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and assume among the powers of the earth a separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them to their separation. Okay, so this is Jefferson starting out. He wants to explain why he doesn't want to be part of Britain anymore. He wants to tell the world that, um, that it's natural for us to be free. Kind of the same theme that um, Thomas Paine says in Common Sense. They're on the other side of the ocean. We're over here. And whenever there's a big thing like this, um, he thinks that, that he needs to explain to the world what um, has caused him to get into this separation. So that is um, the first thing. Uh, you know, sometimes in life, people need to go on with their own life, their own separate ways, and as, in respect, they're going to tell why. The next excerpt, ep excerpt two. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is the portion where um, he talks about our rights are given by God, not the king, and the king can't take away those rights. Number three, we to, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed. Um, this is talking about the people give the government permission to have power and they should use that power to protect the people's rights. Excerpt four, whenever a form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute a new government. If the government is, if the government is abusing its power and not using it to protect people's rights, the people have the right to overthrow that government and set up a government that does protect its rights. Going on to the backside, excerpt five. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having the direct object to establish an absolute tyranny over these states. Basically what this means is every time the king does something, he holds the colonies down and doesn't help the colonies. He's actually hurting the colonies. Examples of this um, could be things like the Boston Massacre and um, the establishment of you know, the Tea Act and the Townsend Act and these things. To prove this, England has interfered with colonial rights. Let the facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused the assent of laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. Okay, so what this means is the people want a law and the king refuses that law because it doesn't suit him. Number seven, in every stage of oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been only answered with repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. So every time the British did something, the colonists asked, they pleaded, they begged for, for um, some type of compromise. And the king just would not compromise. And so they got to the point where they realized if they wanted to be a free people, they needed to get rid of this king. That was the way they were going to be a free people. And excerpt eight. We therefore solemnly publish and declare that these colonies are and outright free and independent states. 
So what we're saying is we no longer want their protection. We no longer want to pay their taxes. We no longer want anything to do with them. So we are going out into the world. Um, I have some pictures that some of the students have made. Um, this is a picture that shows us making an olive, trying to make an olive branch. This shows the tie starting to break. This shows that the colonists can and will fight against the king. Your pictures don't have to be great. Your pictures can just be as good as you can do. Um, but I want you to try your best. I want you to have to, if you have to stop this video and rewind it and listen to what I say a couple of times, you might have to do that. This is a hard assignment. That's why it's worth 20 points. So good luck. I hope that you get this assignment done. Uh, it's due on Friday, uh, October 2nd. So um, I hope that this video is helpful. Uh, God bless you and God bless America.